empirical formula. So an empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of elements in a compound. And this is going to be a mole ratio. And again, it is the lowest whole number ratio. For example, you could have a formula that of a molecule that has six carbons to six hydrogens. So that's the actual formula of the molecule. Its empirical formula, however, will be the lowest whole number ratio. So its empirical formula would be just one carbon to one hydrogen. That's not the actual formula of the molecule. That is its empirical formula, the lowest whole number ratio. We can calculate this empirical formula from the percent compositions for a particular molecule or if we know the masses of the elements within the compound, then we can calculate from that as well. So if mass is given, we can take that mass and we can convert it directly to moles. Because remember, we're looking for that mole ratio. If the percent composition is given instead, first what we're going to do is we're going to convert that. So we're going to go from percent to mass and then we would do our mass to moles, so it's just one more step. Um, it's easy to convert a percent into mass. You just have to pick a given quantity and then decide, well, if I had this much of the molecule, how much of each of the elements would I have in mass? The easiest way to do that would be say, okay, if I have the percentages, let's assume I'm dealing with 100 grams of the sample, just to make the math easier. You could assume any amount, but by assuming 100 grams, it makes it super easy to convert the percentages to mass. For example, if you knew the percent composition of one of the elements was 75.89%, you could assume you're dealing with 100 grams of that stuff, and then that would mean in that 100 gram sample, for the element that was present in 75.89% quantities, in a 100 gram sample you'd have exactly 75.89 grams. So assume if given the percentage that you have 100 grams of the sample, then the percentage easily gets converted into mass. You could assume any amount, but the calculation obviously for 100 grams is super easy. Once we have mass, we can then convert mass to moles using the molar mass of those elements. And once we have moles, we essentially can then express that as a low whole number ratio. That will be the empirical formula of the compound. Again, we need it to be in the lowest whole number ratio if we are to be dealing in the empirical formula. Let's try it out. So we have a compound that has sulfur and oxygen, and we are given the percent composition. So we're going to take these percentages, and we're going to convert them to masses, and then we're going to take the masses, and we're going to convert them to moles, and then we will express that as a ratio, and we want that ratio to be in whole numbers, and we want it to be the lowest possible ratio. That's the sequence of steps we're going to go through. So percentages, if we had a 100 gram sample, a 59.95% would turn into a 59.95 grams. We could assume we had 14 grams of the sample or 1,002 grams of the sample, but then our math is going to be a little bit harder. So let's just assume we had a 100 gram sample because the percentages will be the same no matter what the size. So let's just assume 100 grams, and then the percent can be directly converted over to grams because that's how percentages work. So we'd have 59.95 grams of the oxygen, and we would have 40.05 grams of the sulfur. So that is now the masses of those two elements. But the empirical formula is a mole ratio, so we have to take that mass and we have to convert it to moles. So we do that using a conversion factor. We take our mass in grams and we set up a conversion factor using the molar mass of that substance so one mole of this has a molar mass of 32.07 grams so the grams are going to cancel out and that will give us our moles of sulfur the units of moles follows through because it did not get cancelled out and as suggested you should label your units as well so every number will have a unit on it the units themselves can have labels so you don't confuse different things because we have our next substance where we have 59.95 grams of it, we know that the molar mass of this oxygen is 16 grams per mole. 
or one mole weighs 16 grams. We put grams on the bottom because we want grams to cancel out. We are looking for moles. So again, set up your conversion factor. Don't just do this on your calculator. Write it out. Set up the conversion factor. Cancel out the units. Moles follows through. And again, if you label them, you won't confuse your different quantities for different substances. We know this is sulfur. We know this is oxygen because I labeled the units. So that is the mole ratio between sulfur and oxygen. However, it is not a whole number. So as empirical formulas are the lowest whole number mole ratio, we need to make sure we get all of those in that. We have the mole ratio. The ratio is 1.249 to 3.747 sulfur to oxygen. However, that is not a whole number. Um, so the rest of the calculation is essentially just doing math to get these two to be whole numbers. Lots of different ways you can do that. We could multiply each of these by a thousand. That would give us a whole number. However, it would not be the lowest whole number. So the quickest way, so that we don't get a weird looking formula like this where we're talking about a fraction of, of certain atoms, that's not going to make any sense at all. We want these to be whole numbers because we deal in whole atoms. So the quickest way to do this would be to take both of these numbers and if we figure out which one's smaller, obviously the 1.249 is smaller than the 3.747. If we divide both of them by the smallest number, so I take the 1.249 and I divide it by itself, that obviously is going to give me a 1. If I take the 3.747 and divide by the smallest one, that will give me a 3. I'm maintaining the numerical ratio between the two but now I'm expressing them as whole numbers. So this is just a, a quick, easy trick to get to whole numbers. We could have multiplied them by a thousand and then divide to try to find out the, which would be the uh, lowest whole number. Um, but again, if you just divide by the smallest number, that is generally the quickest way to get to be a whole number. So the ratio of sulfur to oxygen is three to one. So we can then write the empirical formula. And again, this is, this is not necessarily the real formula of the molecule. It is just the lowest whole number ratio for this molecule. One sulfur to three of these oxygens. And obviously as a formula, we use subscripts to express that numeric relationship. So quick way to remember, great poem written by someone who's good at writing poems. Um, take your percent and convert to mass. If you're already given masses, you don't have to do that step. Take your mass and convert to moles using the um, the uh, conversion factor and the atomic masses or molar masses of the substances. Then divide by small and if necessary, we didn't see this in the last example, if you still don't have a whole number at that point, you multiply till whole. For help on how to do that, you can take a look at our textbook. Um, when, when you have decimals, as we'll see in the next example, these obviously are not whole numbers. So after dividing, so you take your percent, you convert to mass, you take your mass, convert to moles, then you divide by small. For certain numbers, you may not yet have a whole number. So for example, if you had 1.5, that's still not a whole number. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to multiply up to get all of those to be whole numbers. Uh, 0.5 can be multiplied by two to get to a whole number. A third can be multiplied by three to get to a whole number. If you think of these as fractions, how to get to a whole number um, will be relatively easy. Let's take a look at one where that happens. Some rounding is okay. Um, we can say about 5% or so rounding is okay. So if you have like 1.999, that's definitely okay to round up to be 2. Even if you have 1.95, that's probably fine to round up to be 2 as well. All right, let's try this one. We've got empirical, we want to find the empirical formula for this particular molecule here. We do some work and we find out that the percent of carbon is 48.64, the percent of hydrogen is 8.160, and the percent of oxygen is 43.20. So again, think of the poem, take those percentages and convert them to mass and then to moles. Um, assume a 100 gram sample, and then your percentages, so that 48.64% carbon, as long as we imagine that we're dealing with 100 gram sample, then we would have only 48.64 grams of carbon. We can quickly convert that to moles using our conversion factor. That is the molar mass of carbon. Grams cancels out, and we end up with our moles of carbon. And again, definitely put the unit 
also put a label on the unit so you know which substances you're dealing with. It's very easy to confuse them in these types of questions. Do the same thing for the hydrogen. The percent becomes a mass. The mass can be converted to moles. And we have our moles of hydrogen and oxygen as well. Now, hydrogen as a gas is diatomic. This is not hydrogen gas. This is not oxygen gas. We are dealing with a particular molecule which has hydrogen and oxygen and carbon in it but it does not have oxygen gas and um, hydrogen gas. Um, it has hydrogen as an element, it has oxygen as an element. So when you're doing your molar conversion, you are treating hydrogen as an element and you're just using its molar mass as an element. It is not a diatomic hydrogen gas. It is not diatomic oxygen gas. It is just hydrogen and oxygen as an element in these compounds. So this gives us our mole ratio, 4.05 to 8.10 to 2.7. So that is the molar ratio. We can't change the ratio, but we do have to express it as a low whole number ratio. The quickest way to do that, divide by small, 2.7 being the smallest one. So if we divide them all by small, we still have the same ratio, but it is now a smaller ratio. The ratio is maintained, but it is now smaller. The problem is, in this case here, we get a non-whole number. So we still have to maintain the ratio, but we don't want to express it as 1.5 carbons because it doesn't make sense to have 0.5 of carbon. So again, empirical formula has to be the lowest whole number ratio. So if we multiply each of these numbers by two, we maintain the ratio, but they are now whole numbers. So the empirical formula for this compound will be three carbons to six hydrogens to two oxygens. And again, we had that ratio way back here. Uh, let's go back to the very first time we got to moles. As soon as you're moles, you have the correct ratio. The only issue after that is to get it to be a whole number and to be the lowest whole number. In this case, we end up with three carbons, six hydrogens, two oxygen.